oh man, that was a brutal bump. <sighs> Thank you so much for watching my brutal bump video and for of course you know noticing my newly acquired boldness. Uh, I'd like to use this opportunity to speak a little bit about what goes on in my head and you know under my boldness uh, when writing songs. Um, now it struck me probably a little bit too late that this song probably isn't you know ideal as it's just a long guitar solo but I use the same kind of principle regardless of what I'm writing so uh, if you you know if you like any of my songs here at YouTube or what I did with Marcus, uh, then you should uh, hopefully be able to learn something out of this. The key word when I write songs is contrasts. Uh, 
that, that's what I, that's the main thing I have in my mind when writing a song. And so, I'm gonna try to demonstrate this uh, by showing you the parts of the song. Harmonically, it's really simple, uh, but it features an important contrast between the C major tonality and the relative minor, which is A minor. Now, in the transition between those chords, you can find some really sweet notes, and basically you can use your ear and just play the C major scale over this progression uh, to find the spots, or you can use your theory knowledge and uh, you know play the chord notes. We then have a short bridge section. which really breaks away and creates a contrast uh, through you know, heavy rhythm guitars which all of a sudden enters, enters the scene or at least heavily distorted rhythm guitars um, and also the, the polka kind of thing is to me more of a groove has a groovier feel whereas this riff is really straightforward rock no real groove in there uh, and if, if you, you know, scroll back and listen to that transition, you will notice it creates a very strong effect when I'm going from the polka to this bridge. And I'm just playing a very, you know, like a... something like that. Uh, and, uh, and then I'm just not playing anymore uh, because such a strong contrast with the riff, so that's, that's enough to carry the song into the next part of the verse. Uh, so we have another part of the verse, and then we have another bridge, and then comes the chorus. Now this chorus features a very important contrast. Because for the first time in this tune, we're actually resting on a chord. We're letting it ring. Now this really isn't very innovative in any way, uh, but if you've had a whole song, which is just a constant flow of notes, you know, or you know, just notes and chords non-stop, and then all of a sudden you get that kind of thing where you're hanging on a chord, then that could really mean the world to that song. Now, of course, you will find that these different song sections, um, if you just you know look at them individually and play them individually, um, they are you know pretty boring, <laughs> but. When you when you put them together, it creates a unity, and that's what you know songwriting is about. It's never about the individual part or even the individual musicians. It's how 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 everything fits together and creates a unity. So I really hope you can use this information to either you know sit down and write your first tune, or you can uh, maybe you know grab an old tune of yours which you know features some great riffs, but you were never able to finish it. You were never able to, you know, take those riffs and make a tune out of it, and perhaps, you know, all that's needed is for you to sit down and, you know, analyze the riffs. You know, okay, so this this first riff is really cool, it's really brutal and heavy and whatnot, and the second riff is also really cool and brutal. But what, why doesn't it work? Well, maybe you have the answer there because both riffs are cool and brutal, and you need a riff in between which is soft and gentle. You know, it could be that easy. Um, so, so basically the idea is to, as with anything, to, to practice this. When writing songs, the idea is to get as many tools as possible which, so that you can sort of get strategic about the writing. So, and you get those tools by writing song after song, listening back and try to analyze the result, you know? So, okay, so I wrote a song and now I'm finished with it, I didn't like it, what could be the problem, okay. You know, that first riff was this and that way, and the other riff was this and that way, and I'm not... There's not happening a whole lot in between. There's not a lot of tension there. There's no contrast or whatever. And you can start analyzing and, and seeing riffs as building blocks, which you can sort of manipulate strategically uh, to, to create a song and go in a direction where you want it to go. Or where I want it to go. <laughs> I'm manipulating your brain. Thanks a lot for uh, watching and uh, I hope these ideas can inspire you and uh, as always, 
post your feedback and I'll do my best to you know, get back to you. And before I go, I just want to say that there is also a collaboration going on using this backing track at GMC. So check out the description below the video to find more about that. See you.